Now, you've probably heard of antibiotic resistance. In this video, we're going to explore how it happens and why it's such a problem. If you remember, antibiotics are a group of drugs that can kill bacteria. And the most well-known example is penicillin, which was the first one to be discovered almost 100 years ago. But because we've been using it for so long, some types of bacteria have now become resistant to it. So the first thing we need to understand is how this resistance happens in the first place. Imagine that you had a colony of bacteria inside you, which was giving you a sore throat and a headache. So you decide to go to the doctors, and they give you some antibiotics. The hope is that the antibiotics will come into contact with the bacteria and kill them. However, like all organisms, bacteria sometimes develop random mutations in their DNA, which can change their characteristics. And very occasionally, these changes result in the bacteria being less affected by the antibiotic. So now, even though the antibiotic kills most of the bacteria, this resistant one survives. And because bacteria are able to replicate so quickly, it quickly forms a new colony of its own, which all have the gene for antibiotic resistance. So we call this new type of bacteria an antibiotic resistance strain. Because the antibiotics you're using aren't effective anymore, you're still infected, and so you can pass the antibiotic resistant bacteria onto other people. Then if they go to the doctor and get the same antibiotic that you had, it won't work. So they'll have to go back and get a different antibiotic. For most people, this other type of antibiotic will work and will kill all the bacteria. But just like before, very occasionally, some of the bacteria will develop resistance to this type of antibiotic too, and go on and grow into a new colony. So now the bacteria are resistant to two types of antibiotic. And as you can imagine, this could happen again and again, until it's resistant to loads of different antibiotics. We call these bacteria that are resistant to loads of different types of antibiotics superbugs. An example of a superbug is MRSA. Because its resistance makes it so hard to kill, it's actually relatively common and often infects people in hospital where it can be fatal. Now, despite what we've just said, it's actually super uncommon for bacteria to develop resistance. And even when they do, it's often only partial resistance. So by completing the course of antibiotics, we can generally still kill all of the bacteria which is why it's so important to take antibiotics for the full length that you're told. The problem though, is that we use so many antibiotics that resistance is just bound to arise. In fact, it's estimated that we use around 100,000 tons of antibiotics each year. And because each ton is 1,000 kilos, that's a lot of antibiotics. One of the reasons that we use so many is that doctors often give out antibiotics in cases where they won't actually help, such as when somebody has a viral illness, which antibiotics can't kill, or in non-serious cases, such as tummy bugs, that will generally clear by themselves in a few days anyway. The big problem, though, is farming. Over two-thirds of that 100,000 tons is given to animals. Farmers actually put antibiotics in the food of healthy animals to prevent them from getting ill in the first place and to make them grow faster, which, as you can imagine, is basically a breeding ground for antibiotic resistance. There are loads of scientists trying to fix the problem by developing new antibiotics that work against these resistant strains, but it's proving difficult and slow. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.